What's up guys, it's MCJ, Matt Collins Jones here, back with another video about power apps and model driven apps and canvas apps and all of these things coming together. And today we're going to be talking about commanding with power effects. So if you're not familiar, power effects is the new term for the language that is used in canvas apps. Now this was announced, I think back at Ignite um, a few months ago at the start of the year that this would be the name of it going forwards and we're going to see more integration with model driven apps with power automate and power uh, virtual agents in the future what microsoft have just done is they've released power fx commanding into model driven apps into public preview from today which means that you can go into a preview and you can start playing around adding new buttons to the command bar so we'll go through how you can get started with this what the command bar is and how you can get start and how you can like do some functions and get get those basics. So let's jump into it. So I'm in a model driven app here and this is the site designer, the app designer. Um, and I can see I've got some custom pages in here that we, we looked at in the last video and find the link here. And we've got a couple of different entities or tables. So we've got contact entity and we've got a account entity. And what we can do is we can edit the, the command bar. So if you look here, this bit here is what we call the command bar. So it's all the things that do actions um, on a record. So this is the command bar here. If I go into a record, once the record loads up, this is also a command bar. Um, this is, uh, if I go to, if I zoom out a little bit, maybe I have a... Maybe I'll have another command bar over here. No, this is just a two tab form. Sorry, let's try something else. Uh, uh, Charge apps, here we go. Um, so a subgrid down here where I can add new accounts and things like that. This is a command bar as well. So we can, we can edit these and add stuff into here. Um, and also if we are on say another uh, an associated uh, grid like the activities page for instance um, this command bar again is something else that we can um, we can edit and we can interact with so we have multiple places where we can interact with the command bar and we can put buttons in there and we can get them to do functions so this only works if you're in the preview editor. So you need to be in this preview editor to edit model driven apps and to add, uh, as well as custom pages, which we covered in the last video, uh, add also command bar buttons. So if I go to uh, the account, for instance, and hover over, get these three buttons here, these three dots, and I can click edit command bar preview. When I select edit command bar preview, it's going to launch a new window for me. The launch of that new window gives me a few options. Edit the main grid, edit the main form, edit subgrid, edit associated view. So the main grid was the first one we showed. For, so when you are looking at records or rows of data uh, in a list, uh, the main form is where we were on that other page where we could interact with the form itself, add things into, into the fields and things. Uh, the subgrid was like that child's accounts view that we showed, and the associated view was like that accounts activities stuff that we showed. So we can edit any one of these, and depending on which one we choose, we may need to use different commands um, to do certain aspects of it. So things like main form, for instance, you're going to have a single record to work with, whereas on the main grid, the subgrid or the associated grid, you may be dealing with multiple records. So you need to take this into account when you are doing anything. So let's just go to main form for now and we'll choose edit. Now, when I choose edit, it's going to edit the, the command bar. So it's going to create a, a component inside of your uh, solution that allows you to edit this. So no matter how many times you um, you want to edit this command bar, so it's going to load up the same one, it's just going to let you edit the one that's in the system. Now there are a few restrictions. So as you can see, um, I've, it defaults to that first icon, which is a save icon, not a first command. And we can see that this button is read only. So we can't interact with um, buttons that are, are there out the box at the moment. This may be something we can do in the future. We don't know yet, but there are going to be some restrictions, but we can add custom buttons in. 
Um, so you may notice there is a trust and button here already called Batman, uh, which is one half was playing with earlier. Um, we can uh, add a new command button here. And what it'll do is it'll add a new command here and we can see it just drops in right there. From this point, I get a few options like I would in a normal Canvas app. So I can change the label of it. So this is the, the label name, so I can call it. Um, we'll call it something like MCJ uh, Cool Button. Uh, if I could spell Cool Button. Uh, we can also do an icon, uh, so we can use a web, web resource that we have in the system, but they also have the idea of icons and we can scroll through um, a bunch of different icons in the system uh, and give this an icon. So we have loads of cool icons in here. Uh, we'll choose a little bot because why not uh, for that one. Uh, we can also do things like tooltips and tooltip descriptions. So we can say um, uh, press this this button for something cool. Uh, and we can do all sorts of other things. We add accessibility text, we can change the order number, but the two things that we really want to look at um, or really what I do is things like run formula and visibility. So these are these are generally the two most uh, most things that you do with trust and buttons. You would um, have them do something uh, and you also want to specify when they are visible or not. So commanding here allows you to do that. It allows you to specify when things are visible. It allows you to run functions or multiple functions over it. Now you are limited in some of the things that you can do, but uh, Microsoft will open these up over time and allow you to do more and more things. Um, so in the actions we have run formula or run JavaScript. So it will give you the ability to just run JavaScript as well. Not only um, PowerFX formulas, but if you want to run a piece of JavaScript for something, uh, for something that maybe you can't do in PowerFX at the moment, then you can choose JavaScript. But Microsoft are allowing you to run PowerFX, meaning that you will only need to know one programming language or one low code language going forward is the, the hope. Let's click run formula. Um, now, up in the command bar, um, we have uh, just the on select component is what we can choose, but we have um, a little editor here where we can do things. Um, so we can delete the true out there and we can just start typing. So we can type something like uh, note uh, and it'll start giving me all these IntelliSense things. So it'll start telling me things that I can do. It'll start telling me components that are on the records that I'm looking at, like the columns and the fields. It'll start giving me all this cool IntelliSense stuff that I can do. And uh, what I actually want to choose, I want to choose Notify. Notify, and we'll open brackets, and you can see the IntelliSense is picking up what I'm trying to do. It's trying to give me some um, some helpful text and notifications. So right, okay, the syntax for Notify is text and then notification type. Um, and we can also actually specify a timeout as well. So that's great. So the text I'm going to put in is uh, aren't command bar buttons cool. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll type in the notification type. So, uh, we'll, so we have different ones. We can choose error information, success, and warning. Again, depending on your context, depending on what you're trying to do with the user, you may want to choose one or the other. If you have more complicated formulas where something might succeed or fail, again, really good uh, idea to use these notification things to show these things to, to the user. So what we'll choose is we'll just choose a success message because that's great. Um, and then we'll also do a timeout of, um, I think I think this is stored in milliseconds, number of milliseconds to display before it's automatically dismissed. So we'll choose 10,000, that should be about 10 seconds maybe. Uh, and we'll close the bracket. Now we can see that as I was typing here, if I keep the bracket open, it's going, oh, hold on, there is an, there's an unexpected close, the parentheses close at the end, we can't find it. So it's going to warn you, it's going to help, it's not going to be perfect, they are working on it, but it's going to at least help you and push you in the right direction. So that's all we want. So we, we when we press this button, we will notify the user and we have a timeout and we'll show a success message. So we'll save and publish. Once we've saved and published, we can press play and we can go and view our app. 
So once our app has loaded up like this, we can go into an account. So we've got an account name here of Batman. Uh, two guesses what my Batman button does. Uh, <laughs> just when I was playing around with it. Um, and once this loads up, we may or may not see the button. Um, sometimes you do need to play a cache, sometimes you do need to just refresh the browser again, um, just to make these buttons appear uh, because your browser may be caching them. We can see there is no other button here, so we'll just hit F5 on the keyboard or Control and F5 on the keyboard, and we'll just refresh the page, and we should hopefully see our new button. Great, so now that it's loaded up, we have this new button right here that says MCJ Cool Button. So if we press the MCJ Cool Button, it's going to give us this awesome error warning, awesome message saying, aren't command bar buttons cool? Uh, and, and then it disappears after a few seconds. So we can add buttons to this, we can show them, we can hide them, we can set rules for showing and hiding them. Um, I'm going to show all of these things in upcoming videos, but I wanted to give you the first look into how to use the command bar buttons, how to access to them, how to edit them, how to save them, how to play around with them so you can get started. But what do you guys think? Is this something you'll use in, like in the future? Are you still gonna use the ribbon workbench to edit these buttons and to add things? Are you going to run PowerFX formulas or are you going to run JavaScript formulas using these? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could drop a like and share it with your friends, that'd be much appreciated. It really helps me out. If you've not already, click the subscribe button, stay up to date with all my latest videos. I'll see you next time.